What's it like coaching men as opposed to college players? Um, I mean, it's actually, um, it's pretty cool, you know, because it's strictly ball. Um, these guys have been coached and have played a lot of ball, so they they process it a little faster. They understand it. Uh, you can talk concepts. You can talk technique. You know, they've seen it all. And so um, you can have conversation with these guys, and they understand it. Yeah. Kind of looking forward a little bit. What will make training camp a success for your unit? Um, just to continue to grow as a group and have fun. I mean, as you guys have been out here, we're going to have fun. We're going to be loose. But I would say they get out of training camp injury free, um, healthy, and um, you know, with our guys having a chance to work every day. Uh, you know, I think if we do that, um, you know, we, we like our chances, you know, for the start of the season. Do you see somebody in that room that's like looking to prove something like, you know, just somebody that, that, that's, that's carrying that Well, I think every player you, you should be playing with the chip and having something to prove. Uh, that's the only way you can be successful at this game. And so I think that's the mindset of this whole team, uh, just based on how they finished last year, based on, you know, where we think we're heading. You know, we feel like we got something to prove, and we're looking forward to, to playing ball. Dre, I know you've addressed this before since you came here, but from being a player here to how it is now, is it worlds different? Completely different, man. I was with Dom last night and Rob Sims and – and we were just sitting here, you know, reminiscing, you know, those guys in town for Calvin's deal, but right. we were just sitting here reminiscing, talking about, you know, what it was like when we were here and what it's like now, the energy, the vibe, and everywhere you go, people are excited about the lines. Now, the flip side of it is we got to go play and perform, but um, as, a, as a professional athlete, this is what you envision. This is what you will hope for when you go to a, a city to play ball. You want to be in a place where people are, are excited about, um, you know, the season. Where do you feel it when you're out and about? Restaurants? I mean, just, you know, you just, the, the energy, man. The airports, you see people wearing lines, gear, and, and you know, like, I, you know, I've been here for a while, so I know a lot of people, but a lot of people are excited about the lines, and they've been following the lines, and uh, and it's something to be a part of, man. It's, it's something uh, to be excited about as a coach, as a player. Now, we got to go perform and, and need to go out there and execute, but um, when there's a vision, you know, when everybody has a vision, uh, it, it makes it more fun. Hey, Dre, do you have a sense that the secondary can be the most improved unit on this team this coming season? Well, I don't know about what what, what needs to be in. I mean, I wasn't here last year, so I really don't know. But I just know we need to go perform. Uh, looking at the guys that we brought in, we brought in the guys that have played a lot of football guys that that has a lot of energy guys that are proven playmakers. So we're excited about what the future holds for those guys and for us as a unit. And so we can't wait to get started and to see how all that stuff comes together. But just the professionalism, right, of Cam and E-Man, uh, those guys been here every day. Um, you know, E-Man, ever since he signed, he's been here rehabbing every day. Um, he here, he's here today. You know, Sutton, just their, their professionalism, uh, how they conduct themselves in the meeting. Uh, they out here early uh, getting work in before practice starts. So it, just instant credibility, man. And so that's the one thing, you know, I was challenging those guys on when we, when they came here, when they signed, uh, was the impact that they were going to bring to the room. You know, how they going to, uh, you know, be able to, to set a great example for the younger players. And so uh, we're excited to have those guys along with the returning players that we have. And so um, see how all this, you know, works together and hopefully it lead to some great things. With Jared Jacobs, um, one year removed again now from his injury, what have you seen from him throughout this offseason? Uh, Jerry is a, um, he's a dog, right? Uh, in a good way, meaning he, he loved to fight, he loved to compete. I love what he brings to the field. Uh, I mean, he's like a sponge and, you know, he wants to get better. Uh, since the first day I've been here, you know, he's been, um, you know, welcoming everything that, that I had to give. And, um, and he's looking forward to the season, man. You know, he's one of the returning guys, starters that we have in the secondary, and we're excited to have him. How do you match up the, uh, you know, the veteran free agents that you signed and brought in with the guys who are sort of established here, you know, already here when these guys got there? How do you bring all those people together? Well, just the one thing is about, you know, forming a bond, right? And I think when you have men, it's easy to form bonds. 
Um, you know, like I've I've been in I've been in a position where um, you know building relationships is key. You know, having a team. You know, you know, like I know what it feels like to be in a locker room. So uh, just making sure these guys understand that we're one, and um, and they know like this is you know we is. You got to compete, right? And um, I think the competition makes each individual better. And so um, I think that brings a lot of great things to our room. And we're excited to see what's going to happen from that. And just one other thing. What have you seen of Kirby Joseph in his second year? What, what is he, how has he gone from the, from the rookie to the second year player? Now? I think uh, when I look at him, he's a phenomenal playmaker. And just the range that he covers when he's in center field, uh, the energy that he brings to the field, he always bouncing around and smiling and happy. And that kind of reminded me of myself. You know, that's, that was the kind of player that I was when I played. And I know that that kind of energy is contagious. And so um, that's what I see in, uh, in, in Kirby. Um, I, I really think this guy, this kid, this player uh, is going to really do a lot of great things for this defense. And just looking at how he played last year, the amount of plays that he, that he made, uh, we're hoping that he can do the same this year for this upcoming season. Is he working on something other than the backflip for the celebration? <laughs> well, I, I haven't seen, I, I think I might have seen him flip once. Um, um, and, you know, knowing Curb, he got something in the bag, you know, he got his grills in, his, his necklace. He might pull out a necklace and, and then <laughs> no telling what he's going to do. But I just love the energy he brings to our team, to our room. Uh, he's fun. He loves ball. He loves to compete. You know, he's one of those guys on days off, he's texting to see, you know, what else can he do to get better. So, uh, I mean, those are the type of men you want to be around. Well, you know what? Yeah, it's, it's completely different than what it was when I played. But, you know, this this is an entertainment, right? It's, you know, guys love to entertain. It seems like the league now, you know, they, they take, they, they've carved out minutes for these jokers to make, to, to, to celebrate and to put on a show after they make a play. Like, three minutes. Like, they got three minutes. They can do whatever they want to do. I mean, they can run to the end zone. I'm like, what are we doing? And I'm actually, I, like, again, like, I wish, I'm a little jealous, man. I'm a little jealous. But it's all fun, man. And, uh, and I love to see it, man, because at the end of the day, if you're not having fun doing what you do, like, what are we doing? And so, um, but it's good to see the energy that the guys play with and the excitement that they bring to the field. Well, we'll we'll to more. To the Say it again? Are you going to be tempted to run into the end zone? No, nah, I, I, I do all my celebrating on the sideline and, and, and high-fiving, but, um, but it, I live through those guys and let those guys enjoy their moment. Um, I don't think at this level you can teach it. You can kind of help them. You know, either you got it or you don't. And I tell people all the time, it was something, you know, I played baseball, right? Um, I was a center fielder, so that, you know, I played four sports. So that, that helped me be able to, to locate and track the ball. Um, and so I, I just think either you got it. You know, I played receiver. And so I th either you have or you don't. But what you can do, you can help guys be able to, uh, find a way to get the ball a lot more, find a way to put yourself in a position where you can defend the pass. Um, and so, and I think we have guys that can defend the pass, you know, proven pr uh, playmakers on the back end and CJ and, and Cam and, you know, we have Kirby guys that have made plays. So I'm excited to see this, this bunch all work together and um, hopefully it can lead to a lot of playmaking. Well, he's anxious, man. You know, again, you know, he he was a, a pretty daggone good player out there in San Fran. You know, he's from North Carolina, uh, went to Tennessee, played with Cam. So uh, those guys are kind of wired the same. And so just to see his uh, his fire to, to get back on the field, his commitment to, uh, you know, working and rehabbing, uh, it tells you about the man. Um, you know, when, when most guys are traveling and vacation and he's here working, you know, to make sure he's ready when we come back for camp. And so um, I'm excited to have a chance to work with him. I think he brings a tremendous amount of uh, leadership and experience to our room and can't wait to see what comes from that. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Wasn't it fun to see all those guys yesterday? Say it again. Wasn't it fun? How do you coach, um, how do you make sure that they're, they're violent on the line of scrimmage but still disciplined in, in the game plan or their responsibilities? Well, I think, you know, a lot of the violence comes from, um, 
you know, teaching them how to strike and the technique. So I, I think the violence comes from teaching the technique that way. You know, you come over and watch us when we do sleds and uh, we do striking drills, it's pretty violent. And then coaching it that way, you know, the uh, you love the physicality to it and you want it right up to that edge. You don't want to cross that line, but when you're playing fast and violent and playing with that technique, uh, and play it obviously within in, in, within the rules of the game. Uh, it all works out. So I just think it starts from practicing that way, and you know if something does cross the line, addressing it and showing why it crosses the line. But we definitely want to play violent and with our hands and physical. Oh, you, I mean, you can get tremendously better. You know, uh, it's funny because all the guys say, man, this isn't, isn't that combine training. You know, the things that we're doing now are all position specific things. And but you can get you can get a lot better uh, because, you know, going through the year that Aiden had last year, he did some great things. Well, there's always things that you can tweak and add to your game to take it to the next level. So having the opportunity to see yourself on tape doing it amongst the best and then analyzing um, things that you can improve upon and adding that to your game, it's only going to make you have an even better year. And, you know, just like, you know, any of you guys ever played a sport or done anything in your life, you're always better at it the second time around. You know, after you've been seasoned and had an opportunity to kind of go through the, you know, the little bumps and bruises of navigating through doing something for the first time. So I think the ceiling is as high as it want to be. Uh, um, I, th I think the way that guy plays, uh, he's a, you guys don't get to see it, but he is an excellent student in the classroom. Um, he learns very, very well. He's very instinctive. So when you have a guy that is able to learn like that and add little different nuggets to his game and then the way he practices and competes in the way he plays on tape, I think the ceiling is whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a guy that has put an investment into his body this offseason. It's been very impressive. Uh, he, he's done a great job just working on his body, um, working on his, his body mechanics. Uh, he looks very, very quick right now. I think the old linemen are probably right about that. He looks different. Um, you know, and that's only going to help our football team, you know, and help Aleem be, you know, what he wants to be too. You know, the guy can do a lot of different things. So he has definitely made a change uh, and worked on his body this off season, and everybody's taking notice of that. Well, I think one of the biggest things that stands out to me, you know, coming in as a new guy is uh, how unselfish this group is. And, um, you know, a lot of times when you when you go in these rooms, you know, guys that have had success and that have been around a little bit, uh, you can have selfish groups. This group is totally unselfish. I mean, everybody from the guys that have been in the league the longest, uh, they're all helping the rookies. You know, they're even helping me as a, as a new guy coming into that group, you know, on things that they used to do. So that aspect of it, everybody's about, uh, everybody's about winning. And, you know, we have a great culture in there where everybody, we practice hard. Uh, you guys have been out here at practice, you know, where you see me probably, me and Cam chasing them to the ball, and we run and we hustle to the ball, and, but, but we're all about that. That's not a show. Those guys want to win games. Um, you know, we know that, you know, our, our calling card this year has got to be, you know, being tough and physical, and that's what we try to practice every day in our drills. That's what we try to implement out here in the team stuff and, and drill that. So I think that's been one of the biggest things, just how unselfish we are and how everybody's bought into the message that Coach Campbell and uh, Coach A.G., are putting together with this team. And when you get a group that's locked in like that, especially with the big guys, it all starts with us, O-line and D-line. You can say whatever you want to say about the quarterbacks and everybody else scoring touchdowns, but if you're not good up, up front on either side, it makes it hard to win football games. So we know that. We're trying to embrace that role and be the best we can be. Because everybody loves sack totals. Is that a <laughs> fine line coaching defensive linemen? run discipline as well because the run game run defense was was an issue for this group last year i know you want both but is it hard to get them to get anybody to well commit it, to defense run defense no not at all because to me 
I've always believed you earn the right to rush the quarterback. And if all you can do is pass rush in this league, you're probably not going to get to pass rush a lot because people are going to be running it down your throat. But your, <laughs> your football team's not going to be very good. You know, so you, we have to be able to stop the run. We have to be able to be, that's why it goes into, we talk about physical strike, we talk about technique and all that type of stuff. You have to be able to do that. So yeah, the sack total is beautiful. And you know, normally the teams that get a lot of sacks are also stopping the run too. You gotta be able to stop the run. You gotta be, you know, you can't be a one trick pony as they always just say. You gotta be able to stop the run and earn the right to rush the passer. Do you feel like you have enough big guys for the middle of that line to stop the run? I, I do. I feel like we're we're in a good position. We got we got a lot of guys that have played a lot of football here. Uh, we got a talented group, so I feel like we have what we need. One of those guys in the middle is Robert. Just curious what you've seen his development early on. What you like about him? I see those players, so. <laughs> you guys, all the questions today. And then I got this guy over here. It's l l smiling at me over here, Coach Davis. <laughs> but no, uh, been very pleased with Broderick. He's a uh, he's a big body guy that. Uh, learns very well and I tell you what he's like a sponge he's soaking it in and you know one of the things that goes back to the comment I think I said earlier about the older guys helping the younger guys you know you look at guys like Aiden and Kamesh and, and Bucks and the, that group just trying to help that guy with all the little ins and outs and little nuances of the defense little nuances of the technique so I've been I've been pleased with what I've seen with with him so far. You know, it, it's hard because we have on shorts and helmets, and you don't get to see a guy, you know, with the pads on. But I'll, as far as all of that stuff, except for the pads, I think he's doing a really good job. I've been impressed with him. I don't know how much you're working with him since he's an edge guy. You know, maybe it's more for Chef, but uh, James Houston, just year two. What is sort of the next step in his development? How much more refined has he been in some of his? You know, Coach Coach Shep and I both get to work with him. Coach Davis, we kind of, you know, split them, you know, the roles he plays. But, you know, one of the things that we talked about just as, as coaches is, and with James is trying to help him to become the most complete player. You know, again, you got to be able to set an edge at that position. You got to be able to rush the passer. And, you know, James has done a really good job this offseason at being, a, being able to do both and working at doing both and I think that's that's been the biggest focus because if he's able to do that like we think that he's capable and the way James wants to this guy can have a great year for us. I know you weren't here last year but he's, that means he's more prepared than to be a three down player because last year was sort of DPR. Yeah I mean that's you know and like like kind of goes along with what we're saying those are the things that you have to do you got to be able to do both to be that that three down player and, and James knows that and James is working hard at that and you know he's been doing a really good job. You get the sense we'll see it different Josh Pascal this year than we saw last year just because he's got some help. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to, you know, uh, re I really have seen Josh uh, in pads in the pros. I, I remember him at Kentucky, being in the SEC when he was, and I know he's a darn good player, but from the things that I've seen out here with uh, an individual and the team stuff, that guy is moving well, he's explosive. Uh, I've, I've been pleased with what I've seen. So again, you know, um, I look forward to when we get pads on and then you could put all of it together, but as far as movement and practice and, 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 and and knowing what to do and executing, he's done a really good job with that. What's your kind of take on Levi? How, how do you approach him with where he is right now? Well, you know, we've, we've been listening to our, our medical staff. This guy's out here. He's doing exactly what they're asking him to do. Uh, you know, he, he everything that he can participate in, he's doing it. I've been very pleased with him in the classroom, um, being active and engaged, knowing what's going on, and you know, he's working his tail off uh, out here right now. Got a question from the big fella over there. Hey, Coach, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the development of Roger Morton over the spring? <laughs> You guys are something else. Coach, Coach Davis told, put you up to that, didn't he? <laughs> Coach Davis put you up to that. Oh, my goodness. You see, you see, we have fun over there in the D-line room, man. We do. But overall, it looks like a pretty a versatile bunch. Like a lot of veteran guys who've done it at a high level. Yeah. Here. You got some young guys, obviously, eight in the defensive field that you run it up last year. Do yeah. you like the room as a whole and what you guys oh, yeah. can, can, can do and yeah, I, I, I absolutely do. I think we got a great. I think we have a great mix, like you talk about. We got great personalities too, and so I think guys are hungry. I think you got guys that have been doing it for a while. You got the younger guys. I think that whole combination, and then on top of that, they all have the personality 
of Coach Campbell and AG and, and my personality, Coach David, it's, it's, it's a great mix. So we're all aligned. And anytime you get alignment by a group and a, a football team, you got to look out. What was it about undrafted free agent Chris Smith out of, out of uh, Notre Dame or, or Harvard that you saw uh, the logo line to that pursuing as a signing? Well, you know, when you watch Chris's tape, um, Chris is a technician, man. He does some things naturally that, that, that we don't even have to coach here. Uh, as far as like block recognition, block destruction, it comes to him very natural. Uh, he learned that at, at Notre Dame, and that, that has served him well. Uh, he, he's done a nice job since he's been out here, too. And uh, he's a kind of a quiet guy a little bit, so you got to prod him. But he's a, he's, a great, he's a great guy. He works his tail off, uh, just always uh, trying to go that extra mile and do it exactly how you want it. Very coachable kid. He's been, he's been a pleasure to have in the room so far. Hey, you mentioned both those undrafted guys. So it's just sort of off the cuff without prompting and saying, hey, they might have a shot here. Oh, he's yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's done a great job. Corey Durden has done a great job. Um, yeah, I, I'm very, I've been very impressed with those those two big inside guys that we brought. Very impressed with those guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. When you hear your head coach, and I know a guy that you have a lot of respect for saying some of those names like that, and then put extra stuff on your plate to make you feel like just here's your thoughts on those uh, Yeah, first and foremost, uh, I'm not going to act oblivious like I didn't hear it because I did. My mom, <laughs> just so y'all know, if y'all ever say anything bad about me, my mom will be the first to see it, and she will be here to talk to y'all about it. But but no, once I heard it, um, one, it didn't shock me because that's who Dan is as a person. Uh, but uh, two, and first and more importantly, it's very humbling. Uh, a guy that I look up to, a guy that's a mentor to me, not just my head coach of the organization I work for. Uh, it's humbling. Uh, and it's always good. It's just like me with my room. It starts with people believing in you. And, you know, that's the thing that kind of push guys, surpass their um, original potential is just a simple belief of someone that you might look up to, somebody that you lean on, and them telling you that you could do it. And sometimes that's all it takes for people in this profession or anything to take that step forward. Uh, so for me, myself, I'm just being where my feet is at the moment. That's in the linebacker room. Linebackers know my standard, my goals for the room, be the best unit in the league. You know, anything I do, I want to reach the top in doing it. It's just the natural competitive nature of me. So just hearing that, seeing that, it makes me want to wake up and go that much harder because now I got to make him right. You, you, you know what I mean? The same way when he made me the outside linebacker coach. I never played outside linebacker. I got to make him right. I got to show why he had the courage to step out on a leaf of faith, so to say, and make me that. So, um, so I'm here, man. That's just a trickle down effect of my players. I credit them because this stuff can't be mentioned or said about me if my players weren't doing what they do on the field. So every time I'm accredited back to the players because they're the ones who make us look good at the end of the, of the day. Kelvin, I'm wondering why do you think the linebacker team is better than it was last year? Uh, it's those guys buying in buying into the things I preach because a coach can stand up there and say a bunch of stuff. But until the guys actually soak it and absorb it and buy in and lean into it and want to do it. That's the thing. These are grown men. These aren't kids. Like you're not making them believe it or not, we 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 you know we paid them a handsome ransom to do this, but they don't have to do anything. It's the point where they meet that, all right, I believe everything this man is saying and I believe this man could take me places that nobody else is taking me. And it's just selling that day in and day out and injecting that into those guys. And then they come out and it's all of them. When once they step in between them white lines, you can ask them my Saturday means like two minutes. It's me telling them I got the best seat in the house and I can't wait to watch them play because I'm a spectator at that point. I sort of asked John this, but um, how does James Houston take that step from going you know, from DPR to a, a three down player and you see he's making strides? And he's definitely making strides and I'm, and I'm very proud of him. You know, this week is quote unquote a week for the young guys and he was a guy on the fence and I looked at him and gave him that look and he knew what that look meant and you see him here today, he's ready to work. Uh, and just it's about time on task with that player. This was a player that you guys know was on practice squad for the first half of last year. So it's actually getting those team reps with the team. Everybody knows what James is capable of doing athletically. But when you get out there with those other 10 men, it's a lot more than just athletic ability. It's buying in, doing things within the framework of the scheme. And that's kind of the things we've been working on with him over the course of the offseason is you're not just going after the quarterback. This is actual play where you have actual responsibility. So just making sure he hones in on the little things because James is a very heady player, actually. It's just him honing in on the details of the little nuances within the scheme. Like, from the outside looking in, it looks like 
You know, I know we're close in age, but I light up whenever somebody say Derek name because it's like a son to me almost in a way. Well, I'll say a little brother. I'm not that old. I mean, I age myself that fast, but he literally is a little brother to me. I can't tell you the amount of texts. And, you know, I know he doesn't mind me saying it, but he was one of the first people that texted me the night that we drafted Jack. And just these players, all NFL players want is clarity, guys. And it's no knock on anybody the way they've done things in the past, but it hasn't always been that way in the NFL. And my players know I think the reason they're at peace with whatever the outcome may be at the end of this deal is because they've been given clarity from day one. You all are going to compete. I mean, it's proven here. I know it's like the right thing to say, but it is proven. We are going to play the best players. We do not care what that looks like. And when that starts top down, it's easy for me to walk in my linebacker room after we take a guy pick 18. Because in probably 20 other rooms, that player's starting. And there's nothing you can do about it as a position coach. Well, that's not the case here. If Jack isn't the top two or three, Jack will continue to go through the process of rookie development until he's hit that mark. And whoever those two guys are, if that's Derrick and Germ, that's Jalen Reeves, maybe, and we call him Germ. If that's Anzo and Malcolm, whatever that looks like, no one can sit here and honestly tell me 365 days ago that you all thought or myself thought Malcolm would take the opening snaps. So that's, that's why it's hard for me to speak on what it might be, what it will be. We haven't even put pads on yet. In the position I coach, it all starts there. What about just Derek specifically? Where have you seen him maybe take an edge outside of what you can see yep. in the pads? Light years. It's been light years. I'm telling you right now, he's not going away quietly. That is a player that I've seen walk in this building since we started up phase two and look like a completely different player. I mean, a kid grown into a man, taking charge, holding people accountable, running the huddle, letting everybody know I know what I'm doing. Now let me help you out. Now that that that's that next step right there to me. Derek knew what to do last year. It's just when things were moving, slowing him down. Now it's he has all that. Now it's hey. Come here, you should be in the nine technique. When I hear Derek Bournes going into year three telling the D lineman, you should be in a nine, you should be in a three versus G, why you're doing that, that's a player that's growing and taking steps. And that's when I get my kind of my flowers as a coach of seeing a player that couldn't tell you what an overfront was two years ago, lining guys up. He's definitely taking a step, and it's going to be hard to keep that player off. Yeah, yes. No, he was fired up. Like, people would be surprised. I am very blessed and fortunate to have the players I do in my room because it, it's, it's no looking over the shoulder. Why, is, why are we taking a linebacker 18? Now, I knew he wanted clarity within that excitement because everybody does. Same thing with Alex. He texted me that night. Just the guys want to know the lay of the land, man, and they know they could reach out to me for that honest answer. And I told him it was an opportunity that we saw our front office saw to get better on our roster, guys. Now, what that means, you all would decide that as far as the landscape of our room. But when I tell you, and you can ask Jack, these guys have took him in like he's been here since we all got here in 21, and they have been competing. They understand it's going to be open competition come training camp. How many times last year you played some of your best defense for the year? You had five rookies on the field. Yep. How much of that was a statement about Alex and his ability to kind of get that defense? That's the thing that's hard to see on tape and people to actually weigh out how valuable it is until 34 isn't out there. And then it's a drastic, or it was, I will say, because Derrick Bourne's Malcolm, they have taken that step to where we're not like, oh, in a panic because Alex needs to tie a shoe on the play. It's, 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 it's now other people can make the calls now. But the value that Alex has, it's almost like having an assistant coach on the field. He's gotten to a point where he knows what I'm thinking. He, he, he knows why I want him. It's like, and when he does bad things or something that Coach Shep doesn't approve of, it's like he gets to me before I can get to him. It's like, I got you, I got you, it's my bad. Oh, I know it's your bad because you know you weren't supposed to. But it's like having another coach on the field. And man, I'm so literally thrilled to have that player back in the multiple things that he can do for our defense.
personally taking the steps that he knows that I need him to take. Uh, one is a player as far as uh, his athletic abilities, fixing some of his techniques, things they asked ask him to do at Iowa are different than things we're asking him to do here, which he's taken on and he's ran with a full steam of head. I've seen that growth. And then from the neck up, he's a very smart player. But within at Iowa, they ran maybe five, six coverages, five, six calls. Here, it's a broader landscape. So being able to transition on this play, I'm doing this. Now, here we are, we're on third and seven, got to be able to click to the third down package and without any hesitation. So just the natural rookie progression, like, and I mean this, guys, it does not matter if he went first round. It doesn't matter. Malcolm went sixth round. That has no tail on the progression of the rookie development. Each guy, and, I, and, I'm, and you know I'm honest with y'all, each guy literally is different. You could get a free agent that you never thought would be anything, guy you just took a flyer on, come in here and pick up the system in two weeks. Each guy's different. And then you got guys that go top 10 and that progression may take longer. That's no knock on the kid. And thankfully, we're in a position where if Jack isn't the opening day starter, there's it is, it's no knock on him. If anything, it's the other guy that stepped up to the challenge of having to overcome all the different nuances of 18 pick. This guy got to do the extra, got to do this. Man. And he's done that. So I wouldn't say, oh, Jack didn't live up to expect. Well, what are the expectations? The expectations is this player continue to progress as a rookie in our system. Yeah. Uh, it's so many battles within the team. I think that's hard to just lay out one, but I'm going to be honest, I'm selfish. It's my room. I would like to know who my three, four guys, and if it's four guys, you guys know last year we found roles for guys. Chris Board was a rotational player, but he had a unique coverage ability and third down ability. We found a role for him. If you can contribute, no matter the snap count, we will have a role for you here on this defense and this team. I think the biggest difference between this year and last year uh, we have a lot of veterans, but with that, in addition to their experience, just now we've added a lot more competition in the room. I think compared to last year, there is competition across the board, every position, and, and that drives the guys. I like guys being themselves. Yeah. So if that's who you are, you come out, be you. Have fun. We're still playing football. It's fun. Be you. Well, I haven't seen any flags out there yet, so so far we're good. Continue to be you, continue to have fun. Yeah, Dre's been awesome. You know, obviously he and I still just kind of learn each other out, but that's been a great relationship. And I really appreciate having him. Yeah, personally, I, I'd say I feel very comfortable. Uh, in addition to, you know, my time here with AG, you know, we're running some similar systems, things I've done in the past. And then really for this, you know, I got a lot of almost of a test run towards the end of last season. So I, I would say I feel comfortable in this role now. It's been fun. I think having the veterans allows us, the short version is, Probably the conversations they pick up on some things really quickly, and there's some things I say they know immediately what I'm talking about. I just or formation they already know the indicators and what it means and things like that. They it just gets a little bit faster. You said Tracy, yeah, Tracy's been great out there. Obviously, you know he's done some of the walkthrough stuff, but his experience you can obviously see on the back end. He's one of those guys that's a really good communicator for us, and you know we certainly appreciate having him and we'll look forward to seeing him as get going here in training camp. You'd have to defer that question to someone else. Uh, as far as me, mentally, with where he is, he's right where I thought he'd always be. I think the whole team kind of feels that way. The whole team has a chip on their shoulder, and everybody out here has goals. Uh, you know, going forward, I think we obviously have talked about our team's goals going forward this year. Um, you know, Coach Campbell's already alluded some of those, and I just think that's a reflection of our group, and I, I think they're a reflection of the whole team. Brian Branch, yeah, Brian Branch has been really exciting to have as a rookie so far. Done a really good job of picking up the defense and learning multiple positions. Certainly, very instinctive player, plays fast. The kind of guy that we thought we were getting on tape. Just you know, knows knows what's coming before it happens. Moves well. You know, you can already see you know his tackling instincts and not more tackling out there, but the way his body control and positions that he gets himself in, you can see why he's good at those things.
the, the versatility of the group, I think first and foremost, just allows for a lot of competition because now it's really the best 11. We can get guys out on the field in a variety of different positions. So I think that's the easiest part of it. The second part of that is what it does allow us to do on defense is it lets us disguise things that we want to do more. You know, you could, for instance, have the nickel run deep, okay, or you could have the safety interchange and, and fit in the box because those guys are comfortable doing a variety of different roles. Even some of our corners, have, you know, have that safety background and vice versa. So those guys are a little bit more interchangeable and allows AG to be a little more flexible in the system that way. Kirby's continued to grow. He did a very good job at the end of last season as a rookie handling the mental side of the game. So you can see that communication. His confidence is certainly there. And, you know, you see him out there. I, I think you guys would see that he's been one of those louder voices out there. And, you know, it allows him to kind of grow into who he wants to be. He, like kind of fits his personality. But sometimes when you're doing a lot of thinking, maybe that kind of occupies your time. And he's not doing as much thinking now. So he can kind of fly around and just kind of be himself and have a little more fun. The easiest way that helps you when you got a bunch of vets around, when everybody knows what to do, the communication's just a little bit faster. And you know, sometimes when you're a young guy, you might end up having to make calls on both sides of the field. Like sometimes Tracy had to do that when you have a young safety out there, right? But now if the other safety's handling his side, you get a little more time just kind of focus on your side. And then you can start to read the book at that point. Okay, what's this offensive formation telling me? I can kind of think about next level things. So I don't have to worry about, you know, what are the calls on both sides of the field? Uh, the competition the guys we brought into the room, I think, just continues to raise the expectations for our group. Uh, they have very high expectations for themselves, and then that kind of translates into high expectations for the group. You mentioned the communication. Communication was kind of a buzzword last year and how it's improved now this year. Um, going up against an offense that has so much, you know, pre-snap motion, things like that, does that help build that communication early for you guys? Certainly the challenges that our offense gives us challenges our communication they do a lot and so that gives us a lot of practice communicating I would say. They're fun to coach. Certainly, their energy, you know, shows up every day, and that, it's kind of infectious within the group. So it's nice to have. From my personal standpoint, you know, I certainly enjoy those guys that are going out there and being themselves and having fun. So far, they've been very good in the meetings. <laughs> yes. Third season for us, Jerry. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll be highly offended. But I mean, he was arguably your most consistent quarterback at the end of last year. I'm just curious, what's his mindset going into third season? Everybody talks about all the new additions, but there's a guy going into third year that has played pretty good football for you guys as well. Yeah, I really like how Jerry did in the spring. I think his mindset going into this third season is really good. He, he's understand he's in competition with everyone else right now, and he's, he's competing his butt off, and I think he's in a really good place. Is he another guy that can go inside outside? Are you guys interested in that? Yeah, Jerry absolutely has that flexibility. He would certainly be one of the guys that has flexibility. As Dan about him last week, what, what's different about Mel Thomas? It seems like he's taking another step, positioning him really good throughout some of these practices. What have you seen from that? I think from Iffy, we've seen some of the progression that you see in a guy when he enters his third season. Like he, He's gained the confidence now. I think he knows really well what he's doing and that he's playing to full speed. I think we've seen a healthy version of Iffy. And I just think he's got a lot of confidence right now. It's been fun to see. We talk about playing really good coverage, and I think that translates into less open receivers and then buys the D-line time. You know, we certainly we talk about that as it relates to our philosophy on defense and how everything fits together, I would say. Yes, I w obviously just when everything happened with Savion, you're just worried about overall health and just to see the way he's bounced back and to see him getting back to things he used to do and things he used to enjoy, I'm, I'm very happy to see. Still some, but kind of curious, not so much, but what 
Yeah, E-Man's done a really good job. He, you know, has one of those guys that stays there mentally and does a really good kind of veteran presence, has a very calm presence to him at the same time, you know, and, and offers really good insight about, okay, hey, you know, we used to do this or offers really good insight as far as just, hey, this formation indicator. And he's a smart player, and that shows up right away. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I think so.